Venezuela is gripped by protests after dictator Nicolas Maduro rigged elections. Statues of former President Hugo Chavez are being vandalized across the country. Protesters burned down the office of the mayor of one city and the regional electoral commission. In one city, according to the video, protesters seized a tank. Recall, protesters have taken to the streets again in Venezuela as opposition leaders are disputing the results of a weekend election that saw President Nicolas Maduro secure another term in power. A large crowd, many waving Venezuelan flags, chanted, We are not afraid. Opposition protesters also marched in the cities of Valencia, Maracay, San Cristobal, Maracaibo, and Barcasamedo. The demonstrations come a day after Venezuela's National Electoral Council formally confirmed that Maduro had been re-elected by a majority of Venezuelans to another six-year term as president, for the period 2025 to 2031. That announcement fueled widespread anger and pushed thousands of Venezuelans to take to the streets of several neighborhoods in Caracas and elsewhere to voice their opposition to Maduro and his government. They were met by tear gas and rubber bullets fired by police. A local monitoring group, the Venezuelan Conflict Observatory, said it had registered 187 protests in 20 states by Monday evening with numerous acts of repression and violence carried out by paramilitary groups and security forces. At least 11 people had been killed in incidents related to the election count or the protests, rights group Foro Penal said. <laughs> Now the Russian occupiers are looking for weak spots of the Ukrainian defenders to concentrate their forces. This was reported by the Ukrainian officer of the 59th Separate Motorized Infantry Brigade named after Yakov Hanziuk, Sergei Tsekhotsky. According to him, the Pokrovsko and Kurakovsko directions are the hottest. But we shouldn't reduce our attention to other areas. Because the enemy is cunning and always looks for weak spots to concentrate their forces. Last Saturday and Sunday, after long infantry assaults, there were powerful attacks using equipment in the Pokrovsk direction. Over these two days, about 39 units of equipment were destroyed and damaged and 206 occupiers were eliminated. We see the result, the enemy has not made any major advances, Tsekhotsky explained on the Espresso TV channel. He also reported that over the past 24 hours there have been no assault actions by the enemy in the Pokrovsky direction. Thanks to our unmanned systems flight masters, we managed to destroy T-72 and BMP-2 tanks. Despite the fact that the enemy did not conduct any assault offensive actions today, we continue to operate successfully. During these 24 hours, the defense forces destroyed many Russian command posts and equipment behind enemy lines. The skill of our fighters and their morale are always at a high level, especially when there are the necessary means to fight the enemy," added Tsekhotsky.